Everybody, we are here with my friend Michael Ackerfeld, who's in Sweden right now. I'm in New York, and uh, thank you, for everybody, for joining. I see everybody's kind of like tuning in there as uh, I'm watching comments come in. I'm actually switching to my headphones so I can hear better. And uh, hello, Michael. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Excellent. I'm doing well. I think everybody knows uh, about Michael, who's out there, because that's probably why you're here. But to, just in case you don't. So, um, so Michael has been kind of the, the front man, shall we say, the lead uh, vocalist and guitarist in Opeth for many, many years. What, since like 1995? Am I right? 90. 30 years. 30 1990. Years. Oh, oh, my God. Wow. That's a long time. I can relate to that. Yes. So, um, and he and I have crossed paths, you know, many times on the road and, you know, a dream theater, Opeth, where these bands that somehow have managed to uh, keep on chugging for a long time. I guess it's one of the things we can even talk about. Um, yeah, it's, it's a crazy thing. So a lot of music, you know, we, we have a lot in common. Michael also has worked a lot with Stephen Wilson, uh, who's our uh, mutual friend. Uh, and we all kind of have like, you know, played in these different musical genres, which is really interesting. Um, you know, what, what, uh, Michael, what's amazing to me and, and I'm, and, and I know it comes up a lot, uh, you know, when people talk to you about your music is, you know, this variety, this path where you, you know, you do this all out kind of like death metal with the rah, 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 uh, vocal sound. And now you're kind of like in, in a more like proggy kind of spacey you know, place, which relaxed mood. Yes, you're relaxed. You're maturing. Yeah. <laughs> Getting old. Yeah. So um, anyway, so great to have you. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I think the last time I saw you was we were doing a festival. Maybe we were uh, we were hanging out with John Petrucci and uh, yeah, just chatting. It was nice. We were backstage at one of these crazy uh, events that, you know, happen. We had a couple of beers, I think. Mm -hmm. More than a couple. <laughs> that was fun, but I haven't, I haven't really seen any uh, friends in the business apart from you know the, the people that live here in Stockholm. Yeah, yeah. And part, you know, parts of the band that lives here. But uh, yeah, I haven't met anyone in a long time. I, I hear you. So um, I know that you have been getting a little bit of summer fun in but besides like just the recent kind of like being able to relax a little bit did you manage to get some music stuff done during this crazy period of time yeah well not for for opeth but in in a way i don't want to come across as insensitive but <clears throat> the pandemic hit at a good time for me work-wise because i've been offered to do a film score basically oh, nice. or for a series um, by um, the director is Jonas Åkerlund who's mostly known for making music videos for like oh. Madonna and Lady Gaga and you know he ha has a past in heavy metal he was in a band called Bathory ways years ago okay. uh, and his friend of mine and he asked if I would be interested in scoring music for a, a TV series that's coming out on Netflix. 
uh, about a guy called Clark Olofsson, who was a famous, infamous robber, basically. Wow, uh, interesting. Yeah, so so I, I it's like almost like a biopic. So I'm writing music from that's supposed to fit in from the 40s and onwards. So, so that's been that's been fun. So I've been doing that. I'm still kind of working on that. That's really really cool. So are you yeah. doing like when? So what is your approach? Are you using like you know like rock band kind of instruments? Are you doing stuff with software or are you yeah vocalizing at all or yeah. all the above? <laughs> yeah, in the beginning I didn't want to uh, do much vocals, but I've done some some vocals and yeah. just he sent me the scripts and and. Um, I read through, and the, but he basically told me just write music like like you normally do. You write music, and that's what I did. Only shorter, <clears throat> shorter, you know, shorter pieces like three minute pieces. Wow! You don't want to spend uh, time working on a twenty minute piece, and then he goes, "That sucks." So I'm just doing shorter things, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's been really fun, and I I think I learned a lot from. I kind of. Uh, do some like school myself in music, how it yeah. sounded in different yeah. different dec decades so, and so, so forth. So genre wise, are you trying to write music that like sounds like it would come from the forties, or trying to write yeah, music like basically that? and and onwards? And uh, you know, some stuff is kind of opathy sounding, I guess. Mm -hmm. and some stuff is definitely not opathy sounding. Right, right. Often. <laughs> just sounds and all, all sorts of things. But it's wow. been really fun and some really nice, I, I know, some, what I think really nice things, I'm almost hoping is it's not going to be used so it could, <laughs> I could take it. Well, <laughs> that's open. funny. So is it like, uh, are you scoring to picture or are you just creating music and he's using it in different scenes? Like what's the... Um, I am scored to picture. I would love to do that. But this is my, the first time I've done anything like this. Yeah. So I'm just basically writing things, sending it to him, you know, and then uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Nice. So this lockdown and all that happened at a good time for you. Yeah, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, no, it was yeah. good. I, I wouldn't have, have time otherwise, really. Yeah, right. So that's yeah. what I've been, Absolutely. I've been keeping busy and working almost every day since. Oh my God, that's great. Since March 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that, wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we were talking before we started the stream. Michael and I were saying that uh, you know what, where we were at before the whole thing, you know, uh, came down, as they say. And uh, actually, what's funny is because like, I live in New York, Michael's in Sweden. Like I was in Europe, you were in the U.S., mm -hmm. and both tours managed to end before things closed down. Yeah, we were lucky. We, we finished off in Los Angeles on, maybe the show was on the 3rd or 4th yeah. of March. Yeah. And then we flew home the next day. And it, there was like some alerts coming out before we went on stage, like Los Angeles is closing down. And I was like, hearing oh that God. too then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we were, yeah, yeah we were lucky. We, we just managed to get, get back home and then everything shut down pretty much. Wow. Amazing, yeah. Because I was, I was also hearing about stuff as I was traveling around with with Dream Theater, and I was like, each city that I would go into, I would try to go find some masks because I was hearing yeah. about all this. And whenever I walked into like a pharmacy to get like a mask, they would say, "Oh, sorry, we don't have any." All the Chinese people were just here and they bought them all. Yeah. So I couldn't really get anything. You know, it was, it was really pretty pretty weird because I was in like four or five different countries as I was hearing about this, thinking what's going on, I better buy a mask and really couldn't get any because no matter where I was, you know, <laughs> the Chinese people had bought them all. Yeah, well, it's, I, I, in Sweden, we didn't have the mask requirements, really. I mean, they, they kind of suggest it when you go on the, on the subway and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, but like hand sanitizer and all that kind of stuff oh, yeah. just disappeared. Yeah. But for me, I'm, like, I'm a bit of a hoarder, and I've been using hand sanitizers for, like since forever. 
anyways so i had like my little stash already oh wow uh, but yeah it's um it, it was a bit it was weird i didn't take it seriously at first it's mm -hmm. just like on the what you read and heard from the media was like it sounded so serious and you know i remember sars and the swine flu and all those yes, kind of things right, it just kind of right, sure. You know, of course, during those days, we were also out touring in the middle of mm -hmm. sure. pandemics, you know, so I was, I, think it, I, was, yeah. I was thinking it's just going <clears> to <throat> blow over. Like that. Right, right. Yeah. And but no, it didn't. No, it didn't. It didn't. What's your, uh, what's the plan for touring or making another like Opeth album or doing that? Do you have any? I don't know. I'd like, I don't really know, to be honest. You know, I know we have plans for touring. We, we keep booking things. And we have been booking mm -hmm. things so, because we were in the middle of tour, of, of a worldwide you gonna, tour. You were going to do more. Yeah, and uh, but those everything had to be pushed forward. Oh wow! And um, so we keep. I, I seriously, I have lost track of what we what we got booked and when it's wow. happening. You know, but okay. there's plans even for this year actually, and the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. But so then if it happens or not, I, I don't know. Where would you start? I mean, you did the you ended in the U.S., so you're gonna go. Like, We're supposed Europe? to start in the U.S. again. Oh wow! That's right but I, I don't know what's, what's happening with that, to be honest. Yeah, you know, Dream Theater is about to make a, an announcement about touring in about I don't know a few days or something like that. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say five minutes because you're looking at your watch. Well, I wanted to find out what date it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in about 57 yeah. seconds. <laughs> Big announcement. And on the screen comes a huge splash, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and hopefully it'll happen, right? Because. Yeah. God, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't say I lost hope, but uh, when it happens, I'll be there. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I won't miss <laughs> That'd be nice if you, could, if you could show up. Let's yeah, I think somebody I'm else I'm... step in. I'm expected on, on stage. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see. It's it's weird, really. Yeah, but I'm not really like uh, despairing. You know, like I'm yeah. busy well, here. You're busy. You're doing your thing. Yeah. But I'm sure the uh, the fans are anxious to see the group again. And you know how it is. Hope so. They love they love the groups. So um, we are going to actually say goodbye to our friends on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, thank you so much for joining everybody. Uh, awesome to have you with us and I'm gonna switch over to my patreon channel uh, For those of you who do not know patreon is kind of like my inner circle. It's this amazing World that uh, allows me to kind of really put out a lot of um, Musical content and energy and speaking with friends like Michael and just kind of a great way to to uh, give a lot to this community and so I, I uh, Definitely encourage you to check it out come and join us um, so we're going to, we're going to continue chatting and I'm gonna, we're going to allow the patrons to ask a lot of questions and then the whole thing will be recorded as well. So, um, yeah, let's make the switch. It'll just take about 20, 30 seconds. Uh, we'll hang out and then